Hey everyone, welcome back to Running on Disney. It is Alexis here. I am starting a little mini series of videos where I talk about some of my favorite vacation spots that aren't Disney. So it's a little bit of a switch up, but I'm trying to think of ways to get videos out there fast. And with Disney kind of being at like a halt right now, I thought this would be kind of fun. They might not be for everyone, but I hope that you stick around and at least hear my reasoning. So this first episode of the series is going to be all about Branson, Missouri. Branson, Missouri is a little town in the Ozarks of Missouri and it's the best way I can describe it to you guys if you have not been there is it kind of is like a boardwalk that has taken over an entire town and that you get a lot of those similar attractions. You have the kind of the creepy haunted house, the wax museums, the mirror mazes, the just those types of touristy attractions that you could pretty much find at any boardwalk on the East Coast. I'm speaking only from personal experience with the East Coast. I don't know if there's anything like that in the West Coast, but those types of attractions that you would you would expect to find at Atlantic City, Ocean City, that kind of thing. And I thought I would talk about three attractions in particular. I'll include some fun clips of some other things as well as ones I'm talking about, but <laughs> I am terrible in an introduction, so let's just get started. The first place I want to tell you guys about is the Dixie Stampede. Now, the Dixie Stampede was brought to you via Dolly Parton. So there is one in Branson, Missouri. And then if you're closer to the East Coast, there is one in Pigeon Forge. I'm assuming it's probably near Dollywood. I'm not sure. But so you do have another option if you don't live in the Midwest. It is a dinner and a show. It has a host and he, he or she, when we went, it was a he, tells the story, some type of story and it gets illustrated by people on horseback. I cannot express to you how much I loved this show. We went with his family over fall break one year and I, I, I couldn't even, like I was so excited, I was jumping up and down, like I couldn't sit still. If you get there early enough, which a lot of people already do, you can go out and see all of the horses that will be featured in the show or mo that will most be featured in the show and you get to see their name and a little bio and for the most part all of the horses are in the outer stall where you can walk by and take pictures or you can see them up close and personal and I just I can't express how much I enjoyed this evening I love horses so much so this was a really awesome an amazing time. It can be expensive um, because you're not just paying for a show, you're also paying for a meal and that's good old-fashioned southern comfort food. I believe ours was fried chicken but if you want to know for a fact what the menu is, it is listed on their website which I will include in the description box below in case you are interested and I just I think the whole family can enjoy this. I mean, my husband's not big into equestrian <laughs> or horses. Um, he he'll, he puts up with it for my sake and he does enjoy, enjoy riding, but even he had fun. In fact, I think the whole family, that was one of those moments where like nobody was actually arguing with each other, which, I mean, if you have siblings, you know how that feels. So I would definitely recommend if you're in Pigeon Forge or if you're in Branson, Missouri, that you check out the Dixie Stampede. I do know that they have an off and an on season, so you're gonna wanna check out the website before you make any plans. But that is the first attraction that I would recommend in Branson, Missouri. The second one is quite possibly my favorite thing to do in Branson. And my husband's probably going to fight me on that because there is an amusement park that we'll talk about next that he is in love with and he has been in love with for years. But this museum 
is the Titanic Museum. And again, they have one out in um, Pigeon Forge in Tennessee. But this one specifically, because it's the only one I've been to, is... I don't, I don't even know how to put it into words. You drive up and it is a... Most of the museum sits in a scale model, uh, like half of the, the RMS Titanic ship. You go in, there is an ice wall where you can feel how cold a glacier would be, kind of. I mean, it's ice, so it's all cold. <laughs> and you get these amazing, let me pull them up real quick, boarding passes. So this one was mine from the last time we went. This one was my husband's. And they'll divvy them out, whether you're male or female. And you are assigned a passenger from any class, first, second, or third, or a crew member, if you're a male, who was on board the maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic. And it gives you a little bit of a blurb. Um, I'm not going to read mine just because I feel like that kind of gives a bit of the awe away. But you're assigned a person and you go through the whole museum and it takes you through what, how they built it. It takes you through third class. You get to see the staircase. You get to walk on the staircase. If you are any type of Titanic fan, whether you enjoy the history, you enjoyed the movie or somewhere in between, everybody can just sit and take a moment of awe about the staircase. The Titanic Museum took the, they were allowed to use the blueprints from the original design for the Titanic and make a replica of that staircase. It is gorgeous. It's, it, I don't know how to describe it. I'm getting, start getting emotional. It puts you in that mindset of, oh my gosh, I'm on Titanic. And then you walk through and you see some first class exhibits and then you get to the musician's quarters. Well, musician's quarters, the musician's room that is a sort of a memorial to the brave men who decided that providing people a piece of calm was more important than saving themselves. And I think especially now, given the circumstances that the world finds themselves in at this particular moment in time, we can all kind of sit back and appreciate that. But you, it, there's this air in there where you can just feel, kind of like feel the sacrifice that those men um, decided to make. And then you go into the captain's bridge. The captain's bridge. I, I'm a big movie, movie nerd. I mean, I, that's not to say that I know everything that there is to know about Titanic or whatnot, but the guy, the actor who played Tit uh, the captain in Titanic was also King Theoden in Lord of the Rings. So there's a bit of an emotionalness watching that movie now for me. So, <laughs> but you just, it's, they done a phenomenal job of building this up and putting you in that experience. I mean, you just, you feel everything. Cause as soon as you step out of the captain's bridge, you're on the promenade deck and they keep the outside of the promenade deck cold because it's supposed to replicate what it felt like the night of the sinking. It's cold. Like you'll go in the summer and you'll be in shorts and a t-shirt, which is what we were in because my husband and I did this on our honeymoon and you get to that room and all of a sudden you're freezing because you did not think that you were going to be thrown into the Northern Atlantic, <laughs> but they do in a manner of speaking. So you go through that and then you get to this point in the museum where there is a bunch of tiny little exhibits that kind of puts you in the in that night on 1912. They have a certain area set up to the one side where you can see exactly how much force it takes to hold on at, the, at any point, given point in the ship's elevation. And it gets, t it gets hard. <laughs> they have a replica of a lifeboat. They have probably one of my favorite parts of the exhibit because me and one of my brother-in-laws are stupid and foolish where they have a bucket and they keep this bucket at the same temperature that the Atlantic was at, like where, where the sinking happened, to show you just how cold it was for the people who ended up dying there. Well, we wouldn't be the family that we are if we didn't make a competition out of it. And 
myself, my husband, and two of his brothers decided that we were going to see who could last the longest with their whole hand submerged in this water. Pretty sure my husband lost first, and then his, one of his brothers, and then it was me and his other brother. And I'm pretty sure we had our hands in that water for like 45 minutes. I in no way recommend doing that. We were foolish. Um, I'm pretty sure his dad was on the verge of like gib smacking us. So, I mean, it's a cool experience. It's something that you will enjoy. I just don't recommend making a competition out of it because really nobody won because our hands like were stiff for the rest of the vacation. So, <laughs> that being said, you make your way through all of this. They have a very special exhibit that, like a piece of the wall that's dedicated to the children that were aboard the Titanic. And then you get into this room. It has a, a, an actual life preserver that they, have cu they had cut off of a body that they had recovered from the um, sink, the sinking location. And in that room, you also have this entire wall, and it's very beautifully done, of every person who was aboard the Titanic. And they have it marked as to whether they had survived or they had passed. And that is the room where you will find out the fate of the person you were assigned on your boarding pass. I survived one time, and I died one time. Or the person that I had received. The unfortunate thing is, for the most part, if you are assigned, if you are a man or you choose to have a male boarding pass, nine times out of ten, you, you well, you know the fate. Women and children first. So, I think that this was a very good way to show you to keep you keep it in the back of your mind just how much this impacted everyone. Um, but I, st I mean, we still had an amazing time. And then you get to the gift shop. And in the gift shop, they have a myriad of things. They have like your typical things. And then of course, because there was a movie made and there was this, <laughs> there was this beautiful necklace, the heart of the ocean. They have a bunch of th those types of replicas from like the really cheap kind to actual like standardized jewelry. And then they have pieces jewelry pieces that were inspired by actual jewelry that was taken aboard the Titanic by some of his passengers. And that is where I found this. Because it looks like the heart of the ocean, but it was different enough that I didn't seem like every other fangirl. I got that for my, my cousin, my cousin, my niece. My family is complicated. I got it for a family member. But this one was inspired by, I believe her name was Lucille Carter. She and her family were taken aboard the, they were on the Titanic and this was one of those cases where her and her husband had, like, they both survived. Um, and then they end up getting a divorce and she actually remarried into a family that their, the family mansion was right around the corner from the house that I grew up in. And she's actually, um, she lived a full life and she was buried at the church that was near the house that I grew up in. So that was really cool because I didn't know that until I got this necklace and I started doing research and I learned about her, um, that we were at, that we share another type of connection. And I think that that's something that was so cool about this museum. Like I've never had that experience at any other museum that I have gone to where I've actually been, look, I looked up things even after leaving. So that, all that to say, I really think that if you're in Branson, you should go to the Titanic Museum. And I will put a link to their website so you can get all information about ticketing and the exhibits down below in the description box. So all of that to be said, we will move on to our third attraction, which is my husband's favorite. It's a staple, it's one of a kind. It is Silver Dollar City, which is the amusement park that is in Branson. Silver Dollar City is very unique. There's not a lot of places like it. I mean, there's more than what I would have thought because Dollywood is kind of like it. There's 
an amusement park in Oklahoma City that's a little bit like it. But it's a very, it's a frontiersy, old timey themed amusement park in the Ozarks. And you, it's just this complete immersion. All of the rides have very like, kind of like Wild West names. There's shows that are very timely. There's the food, the, just the overall atmosphere. It, it's beautiful. It's amazing. There's a reason why if we're in Branson, we're doing that, even if we can't do anything else. I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it without giving, like, I mean, it's an amusement park, but it's themed beautifully. I, as far as theming, I would put it up there with Disney World because of all the intricacies, the way the cast the cast members, can you tell that I love Disney? The way that the employees are dressed, the way that they hold themselves. It's also kind of cool because my husband has family history that goes back with that park. Um, there's a house there that belonged to somebody way up in his family tree. So that's kind of cool. They have live entertainment that comes through like any other amusement park. And it's just, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's set up, it's up in the mountains. You get quite a bit of exercise because you're going up and down hills. But again, I, I couldn't recommend going to this place enough. And I'll have inserted a bunch of pictures for you guys to see kind of what I'm talking about. But if you're in Branson, those are at least the three things I would recommend you doing. Now, of course, they have some other stuff. They have a mirror maze. There's something else that's in the building ne right next to it, and why can't I think of it? They have a wax museum. They, I'm pretty sure they have like this like car place that has a bunch of like mo like movie cars. Like I know they have outside. They have like Lightning McQueen and Mater. But it's a very, very, very cool town. And I would highly recommend going at least once in your life. Maybe twice. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was interesting and I, something new and it kind of perked your spirits. Anyway, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Please be sure to subscribe. <laughs> Before I get off, please subscribe if you have not done so. Click the little bell notification icon to be notified whenever I upload a new material and try to think the happiest thoughts. Bye guys.